Hi everybody, welcome to another Torman's Live Colour event. My name is Fiona, I'm the Torman's Colour Specialist. And uh, today we have a very exciting um, show for you. We've got a couple of fantastic guests joining us this evening. We have uh, Kyle and Cara. So welcome Kyle and Cara. Hey Thank guys. Thanks for Thank, having us. Thanks for having us. Excited to be here. We're very excited to have you here with us. I'll give you an introduction and if I do miss anything, please feel free to um, jump right in. So excuse me while I read what I have here. So Kyle and Cara began their renovation journey over 10 years ago, styling and renovating their way through many homes to inspire and educate homeowners on how to add style and function to Aussie family spaces. They've completed two renovation TV shows and have regularly contributed to other TV reno shows like The Living Room. You may have seen them appear more recently on this year's season of The Block. So they also run a successful design and construction business. Uh, having completed over 35 renovation projects. That's huge, guys. Uh, their coastal and laid-back aesthetic makes them the perfect partners who proudly use Torbman's products and Colorsmith Technology Colours to bring their, home pro bring their home projects to life. Kyle and Cara have been using Torbman's Colours and products for the last 15 years. Their partnership is highly valued and it's so exciting to have them here tonight. And I thank you both very much for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us here today. It's fantastic. Oh, thanks, V. I don't think we need to say any more. I think you just covered like more than enough about <laughs> you us. You that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's get stuck. Let's get straight into it. And I'm going to start by saying, you know, you've been using our products for 15 years. So I'm going to put you on the spot here. What is your favourite product? Oh, favourite product would be? Mine, one coat ceiling. <laughs> yeah, because, of like i i don't mind painting i don't mind the transformation but honestly like to do everything like you know the prep and then two coats of color doing it three times is like a mission so the one coat ceiling for me one and done thank you very much mine would have okay. to be the into uh yeah the endure into yeah. just because i feel like it just well, obviously, colour just adds so much to an interior. And even if you're on a really tight budget, you can do so much with a can of Endure. I have to agree. I love Endure. And the fact that you can, it covers so well and you can literally scrub it and it won't change its structure. I think it's phenomenal. So, yeah, we're on the same page there, definitely. <laughs> and also with all the rain we've been having, just the fact that, um, you know, it has that, mold and mildew properties um it does and you know what when i'm out and about in store every second question i'm asked is how do i get rid of mold and so i direct them straight to obviously using something like mold action but straight to torman's endure as their top coat because as you said it has all of the mold inhibitors inbuilt so it's fantastic yeah you guys are on the same wavelength we you? are we are <laughs> love it it's going to make this a very easy interview that's for sure so now we are going to talk about color smith which you know is my baby. I love it. I've just come back from being at the Sydney Design Show where I've been presenting it to, um, you know, displaying it, presenting it to a lot of designers and it's been very, very well received. But I'm so keen. So Colorsmith has become a huge part of inspiring and um, creating colour selections for your projects. Just how much has Colorsmith had an impact on your colour choices? I guess just the... the process of choosing a paint colour really has been flipped for us. Um, Colorsmith came out when we were finishing off our Blue Lagoon project and you know ordinarily you might be inspired by things but then you go back to the fan deck to choose your colour whereas now um, you can grab your reader or your phone and you can be like down at the rock pools with the kids. You can be in the bush. You can be out and about. You can be at the shops. You can be traveling and find you. Obviously, you've, you usually find your inspiration from places like that, but you can literally choose or make your own color from there. Yeah, I, I think for me, I love the fact that you can take a color from like an object which has certain like emotional attachments and you can, you know, make that a feature color in your, in your room so that when you walk in there, it ignites that same emotion and that feeling of, you know, excitement or that holiday and, and things like that too, as well as that, it just puts the, the creation of the, of the color and more so the naming of the color in back yeah. in the hands of the creator because you're always wondering like oh I wonder where they come up with these weird paint names you know <laughs> in the fan deck and stuff like that so now you get to choose any weird name you like 
I love it. And you're so right. Oh, we used to wonder too, you know, does everybody get together in a like a big boardroom and have, you know, lots of colours thrown out on the table and a few glasses of wine and go, mm, I think we'll call that one that name, that one that name. But you get the ability now yourself. Yeah. You can do that in your own home and create all of your own names. I love it. And I've got with my house, I've really um, captured colour smith and utilised it like you guys like really well. And, you know, I've created my own beautiful colour palettes and I find it fantastic. And you know, I've got a, a wall near my pool with three graduating beautiful greens where I've called them relax, breathe, repeat. There's all that sort of stuff. I just absolutely adore colour. It adds a whole storytelling element or takes it to another level, doesn't it? When you're showing someone through your home and they mention, I love that colour, you've got this whole backstory you can explain to them about, well, I actually found that colour from a vintage wall hanging that I love and it's called Vintage Feather Now. And you have that extra element of storytelling. Yes, and you do. And because colour is very emotive and, you know, colour has that ability to evoke an emotion. And I know from being out and about um, previously um, doing a lot of colour designing, consulting, et cetera, and people would choose a colour on a name association. So I guess, you know, being able to now create your own colours and name them, it opens up the opportunity for so much more within the colour world. Yeah, yeah agree. So... Where are your favourite places to get colour inspiration using Colorsmith from? Well, it does sound um, very cliched, but we are coasties and we love the yeah. beach. We're surfing, we're, we're there every day. So obviously um, down at the beach for us is a big one and particularly for us where we are across the road, we have these rock pools called Blue Lagoon and um, we moved here three years ago and I just feel like we've got so many beautiful memories down there already with the kids and I guess when we're down there we do take life a little bit slower and you know let it's um you know collect seashells and that's for me creatively that's where I find I stop and go wow look at look at all these beautiful browns on the rocks or look at these turquoise colors in the water so for me that's my favorite place to to gather inspiration well, I think, yeah, for me, I, again, like Cara and I are very similar, like we love the coast and we're really sort of loving a lot of greens at the moment. So I feel like, you know, being, you know, so close to some really amazing bushwalks and things like that, there's all these other pops of greens and sort of earthy tones, like Cara mentioned, like along the rocks, which kind of, you know, really resonate with us. And that's why, you know, you see a lot of, you know, um, earthy coloured feature walls downstairs which we've created and and things like that which we've collected all cars collected sort of you know that resonates with that too yeah well, that's fantastic I do have to ask you in um, your Blue Lagoon home which I think is absolutely divine the staircase or the stairwell or whatever you'd like to call it which is just an amazing piece of art what was the inspiration behind that and and the colour can you talk me through that yeah, so um, in our original design for this home, we had a um, pretty standard staircase, really. Like a flight of stairs going up to a landing and then turning and going back up. But yeah. it was such an opportunity there to create something different. And we really wanted it to be something that looked beautiful because you see it when you walk in through the front door as well. Yeah. So, yeah, we just had the idea for this helical staircase and I feel like it really has become the heart of the home in a way and I guess color wise when you're when you're standing at the top of it and looking down it really does look like a shell and it it yeah. really lent itself to that that earthy coastal um aesthetic with the timber on the inside and then sort of the more um cream colors on the outside I will add though that um yeah I'm forever wiping it down because the kids' fingerprints, but <laughs> like we have some good paint on it. <laughs> but I guess the thing we yeah, the texture we originally went to sort of create with the outside, like the the actual shape of the staircase, Kara wanted to do this um, you know, this brushed kind of crisscrossed look. And we started doing that, that effect, and it just I felt like it dated it straight away. And yeah. so what I did was I just got the like a 16 inch blade trowel and just troweled the paint off and because it left like these kind of score marks in it, like, you know, lighter and darker with the paint. And we really liked that effect. It almost gave it like a rammed earth look. And yeah. so we just continued to 
paint on and then trowel it off. Like, How beautiful. Yeah, and it's come yeah. up with this kind of really nice marbly rammed earth effect, which we haven't sort of done before. So, I was, it, Yeah, it's the perfect example of being a little bit more adventurous with your paint, whether it be mm. the colour or the finishes. I yeah. think we really just knew roughly what we wanted it to look like but we were sort of open with our thoughts on how we would execute it and yeah it's come up beautiful oh it just looks I mean obviously from the pictures and I when I look at it it, it reminds me it did remind me of a shell but I just think it is just gorgeous and that is just one spectacular home that you guys have put together well done to you it's amazing thank you, thank you. that's beautiful so I'll continue so I want to talk about interior color schemes where you start when you're trying to work out a colour scheme for interiors and what inspires your colour choices. So how do you begin that whole process? Okay, so um, I guess we're always firstly um, looking at where we're renovating or building and, and being inspired by the home itself, whether it's the initial home or if it's a new build, sort of the area. Um, and with that in our mind, we generally start gathering inspiration to create sort of a physical mood board. Um, so with that in the back of our heads, then we're really starting to think, um, you know, how do we want to feel in this space? How do we want, how, how do we want the colour to resonate with everyone? And um, interiorly, I generally start from the ground up. So I choose my flooring for example, timber or polished concrete or tiles and use that as a base to work upwards with all the yeah. other aspects in mind. I do the same. I always say to everybody, just go out, whatever you're putting on your floor, whether it's a tile, et cetera, and then you can build from that. So with that said, and I and talking about a mood board, I think that you've nailed it because that gives, if, if we've got our client or customers, consumers out there watching and they're not sure where to start building that mood board, Finding your tile is a great way to begin your colour, interior, renovation, building journey. Yeah. Um, how do you, so for example, you might have a tile that let's just say we've got a piece of cow cutter marble. Everybody sort of knows what that is, the marble with a beautiful vein running through. What would you do if you wanted to inject some colour? So you've got beautiful, um, you know, sort of off whites, beautiful warm greys. Sort of from that, how would you develop a colour palette? Like what sort of colours would you look to put with that? Yeah, well, I guess I would yeah, use this as my starting point and my inspiration mm -hmm. for the flooring in this case and really look at the colours that resonate with me within that and sort of draw from that um, the inspiration. So Colorsmith is a perfect example. Having a play around with the reader and moving it across the tile or the, the timber or whatever it is and finding those tones that I love yeah. and... Um, and just having a play around, I encourage everyone to just start playing with the app because you can find similar colours and tonally start to find those, those colours within your starting point that are going to work. And then from there, it's really about um, looking at it holistically. So obviously we need to take into account how much natural light is in a space, um, how dark and moody do you want to feel or how light and airy that in conjunction with the natural light will really determine where I go from there. Yes, and without complicating it for people, it really is It really is about grabbing a couple of colours and just starting with some samples on the wall. Um, try not to overcomplicate it in your head. I always tell people, for me personally, I have an idea in my head and usually it's the first idea that comes to my head. And even if I do visit, 10 or so ideas generally speaking I'll go back to that first idea so yeah. there is that little bit of intuition there and I tell people to trust their own intuition in that regard perfect and that's so true and you're right I do the same I'm like yes I'm going to do that and then I'll go on a tangent and explore this and this and this and I always come back to the first one yeah so you're right trust your intuition that is really good advice how do you find um exterior like, what do you do when you're working on an exterior colour scheme? So what are your biggest tips? As we know, exterior colour schemes can be tricky and obviously, you know, using whites outside can certainly be very tricky. If they don't have enough tint in them, they can, you know, bleach out or wash right out. So what do you do? And what are some of your tips that you can share with us? 
I like to experiment with like textures and things like that too. And we've seen a lot of homes in the past have like just too much going on. There's like five different types of cladding, three different types of stone, then feature walls on the outside. And you got to be careful not to put all the things you like all on the one facade, although they might be great. It's always good to pair those exterior elements back and stick to maybe three different textures, like a like a wall clad, you know, a natural stone look and some some nice plain sort of colored render as well. So I think when you consider it like as an entire project and cohesively um, and make sure that it's like, you know, not too busy, that'd be my number one tip for people. In terms of where to start on the flip side to the interior, when selecting colours for the exterior, I always start from the roof and work from there. Um, yep. So, and you're nodding, so. <laughs> I'll do exactly the same. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So um, I guess taking into account the home and the inspiration for, you know, where we want to take the project, it's really about narrowing down what you want. So starting with the roof is a really clear way for me to, to go, okay, I'm going to start with this and work backwards. and. Um, when it comes to whites, I, I always tell everyone you need to go darker than you think. Um, for the reason that you were saying, it can appear really washed out or just too bright and, and also just practically from a, from a dirt point of view. That's exactly right. I mean, if you live out in the bush where there's heaps of red dirt, et cetera, going white, mm. you're going to be standing out there every day hosing the house down. You're going to I be mean, just even in... Yeah. Yeah. Even in suburban areas, like you don't realize how much dirt and stuff just builds up on the house with being in close proximity to a road, which most homes are. Um, yes. We get our house washed. Like we actually got the guy booked in today, but he didn't come because it's raining. Um, we get our house and washed like, like literally every nine months and it yeah. comes up. You'd be so surprised. Like it looks sparkling. It's like the house has had a good bath. And yeah. just general feedback we get on socials, you know, people might have followed a particular project of ours and we say, oh, it was Torbman's barely beige and, and people get a small sample of it and go, no, that's not right. That's so dark. But they don't realise once that translates onto a full wall in full sunlight, how much lighter it comes up. And I always use that as an example of make sure you're at least sampling the darker shades because you'll be surprised how light and bright it will look. And that's, I must, you've hit the nail on the head there. And that's something that I talk about in every live session, we talk about sampling colour and in particular um, interior, you know, when we're talking about whites and the exterior, and I usually recommend using at least a metre by a metre piece of cardboard, three coats of the, the colour in question and moving it around the exterior of the dwelling, paying particular attention to full sun, because the last thing you want to do is, you know, you're getting up for your morning cup of tea, you're outside at seven o'clock and it's like, oh, I've got to put my sunnies on, I can't sit there because I'm just blinded by the glare that's coming off your home. It's just not, it's not pleasant. So you're 100% right. You really need to sample because looking at a tiny little square, even, you know, just a colour chip that you're picking off the colour wall or looking at a fan deck, it's indicative only because when it goes outside on a large expanse, it's going to start to play within the elements, the lighting, et cetera, and same interior. You know, yeah. your whites, your colours, they'll change. So, yeah, sampling is the best advice I think that we can give everybody out there because it does. And then it, it prevents anybody being disappointed with their colour choices. That's, That's right. right. And I like what you said, the big samples, the better. Yeah. Like you can't go up, up to it with like a little tiny piece yeah. like this. You need to see like a good square metre of the, the colour in question. Oh, you do. Sorry good for people to have these mood boards early on in their project and it doesn't need to be a fancy you know big pin board on the wall it can be a you know a tray but just start that sampling process early on even if your home's not built so that by the time you get to the point where you can hold up samples you have a rough idea in your head of how you want the project to look because I feel people um yeah, might not necessarily work well under pressure and, you know, need to make a decision really quickly. And that's where they go, oh, just choose this one and end up not being as happy as they could be with the final outcome. I agree. And I've dealt with a lot of people that are saying, look, our paint is 
I have to give my colors to the builder tomorrow or the painter's coming tomorrow. I need a color. I'm like, I will give you some suggestions, but you need to sample it first. Don't just do it and then it goes on the walls and you're not going to be happy. Or they'll say, oh, you know, Jane down the road, she's got this beautiful, she might have, for example, morning fog or something on her walls. It looks fantastic, but in my house it looks nothing like that. Why is that? I don't like the colour. And it's because obviously, you know, your colour is going to be influenced by your lighting, your flooring, the furniture that you have within. So it's really important. But going back to your mood board, can I ask you, like, when somebody's creating a mood board, what sort of things can you suggest that they put on there? Is it... You know, are you looking for images in magazines of things that appeal to you? Or what sort of things do you suggest that that go on the board to help them build their vision? Honestly, I tell people anything and anything that inspires you, Mm -hmm. pop it on there. Even if it's a picture of an interior and there's only one particular element you love about that picture, pop it on there because really the more diverse you can get with your inspiration, the more unique your project's going to look. And I think that can be a tough one in itself in this social day and age when we're bombarded with information and you you do see it. Some homes start to all look like each other. So I think start the process early and find those little things that are a little bit different or quirky. Um, You know, it could be like I'm looking, I'm in our office at the moment, I'm looking at a packaging that's got a nice blue. You could literally cut out a bit of that cardboard and stick that on there as some inspiration so just yeah samples pictures in magazines obviously that's a that's an obvious one but it could be you could be at a cafe and see a brochure or you could take a photo of something I do encourage people if they have lots of images on their phone to to go to the effort of printing them off Uh, like you know a lot of towns have local printers and it's a really cost effective way to have a physical copy of something I feel Um, again getting off our phones and off our devices and having physical mood boards is a really inspiring way of gathering your thoughts. I agree I think we can all build something um, you know within a digital space but having it physical and then you can walk past and go I really like that or you know and chopping and changing things and continually adding until you find that constant theme that you're like I really must be drawn to this particular blue or whatever it may be I think yeah certainly a great way to Build. Yeah, build <coughs> and, and also um, prevent arguments with your partner down the track. What are you talking about? <laughs> if you have a, a mood board and you've been working on that and you have an idea in your head of what you like, you know, yeah. if your partner suggests something that's not in line with that, you really do have a nice little argument there um, to, to rebut. But I guess the other thing about that is, on the contrary, um, Cara's picked a few you know, feature wall colours and she's gone back in and changed them as well. And I guess that's the beauty about paint. Like if you do decide to go down the track, you do your feature wall colour and it doesn't quite turn out the way you wanted it to or doesn't have that feel, it's pretty easy to just to paint over it. It sure is, isn't it? I mean, it's what, two litres for a feature wall. Great way to make a whole new, or make a space, feel brand new if you like and and an easy way to transform an entire room yeah yeah and that's where I think people you know can can be that bit more adventurous you know it's not a like a big investment to recode a feature wall like you know have a bit of fun with it do something that's a little bit daring think outside of what you usually do I think it's look I'll be honest I think our first home my bedroom had 27 and I'm not exaggerating 27 different colors and my husband came home one day and I'd rechange I changed it again because I bought a new duny cover and everything else and he said oh my god the walls feel like they're closing in on me there's that many layers (laughs) but I I I love it I love the fact that you can literally walk in you know what I found this duny cover that I adore I'm going to extract a color out of that and nowadays at least I can use colorsmith to get the exact tone once upon a time it was van deck or standing at a color all colour wall trying to find that colour yeah you know and I grabbed the paint and by the time my husband came home from work the whole room was transformed yet again but I love it I think it's a brilliant way and it's a super easy way and, and I get asked quite a lot a feature wall still in and and they are people are still using that as a way to create and transform a space 
for yeah. sure. For us, it's not generally just one wall by itself. It's always yeah. like two, like it'll wrap around yeah. the corner or it'll go up to a certain height with some paneling and be like a band around. But using yeah. it to create that feature is yes. definitely, you know, something that, you know, is easy for people to apply within their homes. Oh, totally. And for me, it's barn doors. I love creating or putting a colour onto a barn door. I think it is a great way to transform a space. Yeah. yeah. Without, if you, because there's a lot of people, and I understand not everyone is confident with colour. And people do feel that, you know, if I stick with white, it's safe or, you know, a neutral or whatever it may be. And I completely understand that. But mm. I do feel that there really is a place nowadays to inject more colour into our lives yeah. because of the way colour is so emotive. And, you know, we've covered on the other side of COVID now where, there was a lot of, you know, gloom and doom. And I do think that colour can really make you feel, oh, can make you feel alive. And we now live so much more, you know, the home office. Like for me now, I know that I work at home a lot. Mm -hmm. And so over the Christmas period, when I transform this wall to another wall, my office is going to get a lot of colour just so that I feel like it's a different room within the house. I don't feel like I'm at home and it's going to really see signify to me that this is a working space so it's amazing what we can do with color mm -hmm. so can i ask about your new build yeah can you talk a little bit about that like i know there's not a lot out there but can you share a little bit about um bay builds with us so we've just had our da approval come through thank god mm -hmm. because we um we actually thought we'd be almost finished by now and we were in council yeah literally a year um wow. So, yeah, we're doing a side-by-side -side development, a duplex called Bay Builds. It's at Tawoon Bay. We're very excited to start, particularly the builder yep. here. I feel like I'm ready for my next project. I need that outlet, yep. I need that hands-on and, you know, that creative space for me. That's where, that's where it all happens. So, so it's a side-by-side -side duplex. The layouts internally are exactly the same. And we've done that on purpose because we're really excited to show people. Um, so we'll film this as we always do. We're excited yeah. to show people two completely different takes on the one layout and colour and the Torben's paint will play a big part in that. So we're really excited to, to kick it off. And then exteriorly, um, it's... It will look the same at the front, but in terms of the landscaping, it's going to be completely different as well. So they'll both have a small pool. And again, we've designed them completely different. I cannot wait to see it. So can you, before we conclude, can you share any colour inspiration at this early stage with us? Yeah, it's all very, um, I, I would definitely with colour in particular, do work better under pressure. So I, I start my ideas and my thought process you know, pretty early on, but I'm reluctant to name the two styles as yet because I feel like they're evolving and as yeah. Kyle builds them and as I can see the natural light in the space, that's when I really go, this needs to be this colour. And But um, definitely one will be, it'll, but they'll both be within our style. So obviously you guys know we use lots of earthy tones, but I think one will be a bit, will work on the clays um, and draw some inspiration from the beautiful rocks down at Tawoon Bay, so that clay earth look. And then on the other side, um, there's going to be some warmer timber tones, so we're going to keep things a little bit lighter to offset that. And then we're going to play on some contrast with, like in the kitchen, for example, there'll be um, darker appliances to sort of contrast against the, the lighter colours and the warmer timber tones, so... I don't know if that makes sense as I it does. blurt it out to you, but it's going to be a work in progress because, yeah, as I said, I love being in the space and then choosing the colour from there. And that's all news to me too, so it's good to have that insight from Cara. <laughs> so I'm going to be building it. Hang on, where's the, where's the mood board? <laughs> it's, it's coming. Yeah, it's coming. Uh, it's up in here. We'll share. Yeah, it literally is all up in here. There's there's a little bit floating around my office, but we'll share the process as we always do. I guess the big thing for us was waiting for that council approval. Um, sure. I just feel, um, yeah, when it's in council land, things in my head are still moving. But as soon as we, you know, what's the saying? Break ground. That's when it yeah. really starts. Um, coming together in real. Yeah. 
That's so exciting. And I cannot wait. I'm sure everybody else out there cannot wait to see what you do and to follow uh, your journey as you progress with this next new build. Um, but I'd really love to, I'm going to conclude tonight, and I'd really love to thank you very, very much for joining us. It has been fantastic to have you with us um, this evening to talk all things colour. Um, appreciate your time and appreciate your insight and all of your tips and tricks that you have um, outlaid for everybody to certainly uh, utilise when they are going on their colour journey. And um, again, thank you very much for joining us and thank everybody out there for joining us this evening and look forward to seeing you all again very soon. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thanks, Faye.